So I only remember my mother and my father and my baby brother. I do mean my baby brother. He was six months old. And we were by the side of this lake. See, it's a little pond. Very shallow, I know, because I'm standing in it. I'm standing in it. Now, you have to imagine two and a half years old is about that tall, right? And you remember how little boys are kind of round all over? And they have trunks that kind of come down to their knees. They, yeah. And I remember standing in the water up to my thighs, which tells you how shallow it was, maybe a little higher, and looking over to the shore and seeing my mother there on the shore in one of those 1955 bathing suits. You remember the ones I'm talking about, with the sheared hip and everything. She's wearing her glasses with the pointy frames. And she's, she's, she's looking at me, but she has her hand on my baby brother who's lying on a, on a towel there on the little sandy shore. But what I remember most, and this is very important, is that my hand is held way up high because I'm holding on to my dad, who's making sure I don't topple over in the water. And I can remember that. I'm, too, I'm this big, and I can remember feeling kind of cold because in September, a little breeze can evaporate the water very quickly and shivering a little bit, and I can remember my hand being stretched as I held it, and I can remember my dad reaching down, and he was wearing the same kind of trunks I was, but being grown up, they were a little further up his thigh, you know, and seeing my mother on the shore, and seeing my little brother there on the shore with her. I want you to keep that image, because where I want to go today is to the question of our relationships. I told you that adult spirituality, and we're talking about what it's like to be a grown-up in a spiritual way, consists largely of realizing you're a responsible human being, that suddenly all your actions count, not like when you're a kid and there's always a do-over or someone to clean up after you. If, if you're a grown-up, when you make mistakes, they matter, and they can have consequences. Intimacy is a big deal. How do we connect with people in a way that we don't hurt and get hurt, and marriage, spouses, mates, how do we choose the right one? And sometimes we don't, and then we live to regret the day and pay the prices for it. Well, I want to talk about parenthood now, because even if you're not a parent in the ordinary sense of having children, everyone in the room that I know of actually has parents at some point in their lives. We're all children of parents, are we not? That relationship becomes different when we become adults, doesn't it? Sometimes our parents know it, sometimes they don't. Sometimes we know it, sometimes we don't. I think I've pointed out that when you're a young adult and you're living away and you go back to visit your parents and you think you're all grown up and then suddenly you find yourself pouring the same bowl of cereal you did when you were 11 years old and suddenly you're going through all the same motions you did when you were 12. Just having your parents around as an adult makes you feel like a kid again, doesn't it? Well, it also makes your parents feel like a parent again. The messy world we live in, all these things. Anyone here remember something about 30 or more years ago called transactional analysis? Ah, I hit a nerve, eh? One of the key elements of that was understanding that we have essentially three roles we play in life. We can be someone's child, someone's peer, or someone's parent. And like it or not, we tend to put everyone we know into one of those boxes, and we therefore respond to them in one of those ways. Whether or not we're in that relationship is another question altogether. Just because we have a boss doesn't mean we're a child. Just because we have a child doesn't mean we're very good at being parents. You can see the complexity here. Well, I bring all this up because I think we all know the truth of being in multiple relationships eye to eye with siblings and mates and friends, looking upward to people in authority, parents, bosses, leaders, looking down in responsibility on children, subordinates, and younger siblings. What I want to bring up here is that somehow we tend to think that we are one person. You know what I mean? That I'm me, you're you, we're the same person, when in reality we're at least three people because every time we get into one of these relationships, we are in a different personal connection, aren't we? Like I said, you go back home to be with your parents, and suddenly you feel like a kid again. 
or vice versa, when you become older and you have children and you move in with them or to get closer to them, aren't you tempted back into the parenting role? And then your adult children begin to parent you back. And that's really awkward, isn't it? And it's disturbing, too, because all those patterns have been upset. But I want to bring up most important at the moment this idea that we're many people, that the complexity of adult life is very real, and that we, when we try to simplify it too much, we may be simplifying it more than we ought, that we ought to acknowledge that we bring our childhood feelings into the room with us every time we see someone who has some power over us, parent, mate, boss, that we can feel those childhood feelings all the time. And likewise, if we run into someone younger than ourselves and we have children, we may tend to look down upon them and pat them gently on the head, even when they may be our equal in the workplace or any other place. It's really hard work being an adult because we're more than one person, each and every one of us. And I guess the question I'm asking spiritually is, is there a oneness behind the manyness? Eric Erickson, who is giving me a lot of guidance in this long sequence all the way through the year, tells us that the biggest challenge of adulthood is intimacy, forming a close relationship with another person. And that's a great thing to talk about because guess what? Not only is it a great relationship with a mate, it's forming a great relationship, an intimate relationship with a child. How many of us as parents, you don't have to raise your hands, wish you were closer to your children? How many of you, and again, don't raise your hand, miss a closer relationship with a parent? The intimacy questions go on our whole life. But I'm going to ask you to add another and, other, and even more distressing layer to this. Intimacy with yourself. Are you really close to who you are? Can we get to know our many selves and not try to push them too hastily into one package? Perhaps it's something larger than you've ever thought of. I think adulthood spiritually is when we confront a complexity we cannot get rid of, how much we're not united how much we get buffeted from one role to another, from one kind of intimacy to another. And as we move through adulthood, we often find ourselves seeking that intimacy with our own souls to connect our different selves, connect with them and bring them closer together. My father, whom I remember holding that hand, remember? As he became an older man, observed, not alone, he's quoting someone, I think, that as you grow older, you don't so much change as become more like yourself. And I think there is truth there. Spiritually, you discover yourself more and more. It isn't like you become a grown-up and know who you are. At the moment you become a grown-up, you know that you are. You're aware of your own existence, that there's a person in the world and you have some sense of what you are, but you spend the rest of your life trying to pull it all together. Of course, there's that famous bumper sticker and thing on the refrigerator that says, by the time I got it all together, I forgot where I put it. There's an urgency that comes along with that, too. Adulthood, trying to put our many selves together to find the unity behind the complexity, the real singularity, not the false singularity of the mirror or the job or the house or the reputation, the person amidst the people that we are. And here's where I'm going to add another disturbing notion. A couple of weeks ago I said that when we get to know someone intimately, a spouse, say, we discover somewhere in the midst of getting to know them deeply that there are parts of them we will never know. You can't read their minds. You can't be in the room with them the whole time. You've got to go to sleep sometime. They will have a whole life that will not be part of your life. That intimacy you have with that person cannot be the whole person. Well, guess what? There are parts of you you do not know. 